Greetings from Canada, and thank you to the Scientific Committee of the ICS for um, accepting our presentation. My name is Sinead Dufour, and I am presenting on behalf of our research team at McMaster University in Canada. Electrical muscle stimulation for the conservative management of female pelvic floor dysfunction, a systematic scoping review. I have nothing to disclose. So we of course know that female pelvic floor dysfunctions are common, but we also know that you know, women present with totally different phenotypes and it means we need a whole continuum of care and different care is gonna be appropriate for different people. So we need really good conservative care options, but we also need good uh, surgical care options. When it comes to conservative care, we have a number of excellent strategies that have high evidence, of course, individualized supervised pelvic floor muscle training being at the top of the list. But we also have some good data to support uh, various adjunctive strategies um, that are also conservative care options. And it's important for us to understand these strategies given that patient's preference might align more with some of these potential options. So electrical muscle stimulation in particular is a long-standing care strategy, conservative care strategy, certainly considered more of an adjunctive care strategy to be used together with some of the level 1A conservative care options. With technology um, really accelerating and you know we have newer technologies emerging all the time, uh, particularly newer technologies for EMS, we wanted to kind of get a sense of you know, where the state of the science is around electrical muscle stimulation that of course includes some of these novel technologies. So here are um, a sample of uh, the technologies that are included in this review. So the aim was threefold, to review the current efficacy of EMS, but to also describe the efficacy in terms of comparing intravaginal EMS and kind of more traditional forms of EMS, but also with extravaginal EMS. So EMS that is either using superficial electrodes or really more novel forms where you're fully um, clothed while you receive uh, your EMS. And then to kind of look at the difference in parameters in terms of more traditional lower frequency EMS and how that compares to higher frequency EMS or higher intensity focused um, care. So we conducted a systematic scoping review to address these aims. We looked at three databases and eligible articles included females with pelvic floor dysfunctions and any type of use of EMS for the conservative treatment of these issues. We used covenants. We had two reviewers who independently screened, reviewed and extracted the data. And then of course we analyzed um, based on um, our aims of the study, based on those questions. So you can see our PRISMA, Prisma flow diagram here. We started off with um, over 1,000 papers, so 1,407. And then by the end, we actually had 38 studies uh, to do our data extraction. So our results, so we of course, based on our aims, categorized our um, studies in terms of the different EMS types. So we had 13 studies for intravaginal EMS, 10 for extravaginal EMS, and then 15 actually were unspecified. In addition, we categorized in terms of some of the EMS parameters. So we had low frequency EMS, which was anything sort of lower than um, 50 hertz. We had um, 11 studies there. We had our higher um, frequency EMS, which was anything sort of um, above 50 hertz. And that of course included our high intensity focused electromagnetic stimulation. Our high FEM technology was included there. And then we have our non-specified frequency. And the population characteristics um, of the included studies included um, urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence, overactive bladder, sexual dysfunction, and vaginal laxity. So as far as outcomes were concerned, outcomes really did span the domains of the International Classification of Functioning, Disability, and Health. So we had domains in the impairment, we had domains in, in function and activities, and we had domains at the level of participation. So most of those were quality of life. And what we found actually was that all forms of EMS were actually found to improve outcomes across all domains. Urinary incontinence specifically was 
found to move more um, notably than the other characteristics of the population. And certainly the results did favor specifically for urinary incontinence, high frequency EMS and high fem EMS. Um, EMS was found to be well tolerated with few adverse reports. Our analysis um, is ongoing and uh, we certainly will uh, be publishing uh, all of these findings. So in conclusion, a continuum of electrical muscle stimulation applications, including sort of novel intravaginal and extravaginal um, applications, we know these exist for um, pelvic floor dysfunction and probably more technologies will continue to pop up leveraging you know, the potential benefit of EMS. As far as our review is concerned, all actually do appear to carry some benefit to be used as an adjunctive conservative care strategy. So that's important. And particularly the evidence really lines up with incontinence. So given uh, the, the efficacy, and in some cases lower, in some cases higher, um, it is important that you know, we do understand the variety of EMS tools available. So we're able to consider um, patient preferences when applying uh, this care. I'd like to thank you um, for your attention for this uh, presentation. Certainly, uh, if there are any questions, you can direct those to me at sdufour at mcmaster.ca.